Hey everyone, Dolph Steve here with 5895 Petty Robotics here on the Milstein Division, checking out their amazing robot, really nice intake, and really unique arm. Here with Michael, Marshall, Sean, Philip, and Cafe. We're gonna be walking through their robot, really nice intake here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Michael, we're going to start with you. Talk to me about your elbow and your wrist that you have on this robot. You guys are also 2022 and 2023 Mid-Atlantic District winners and have a seven district win streak. So talk to me about your elbow and wrist, how amazing you guys have done so far. Of course, so um, our arm um, this year, we designed a shoulder, we have a elbow and we also have a wrist. We have um, the um, shoulder is driven by the gearbox on the bottom over here. And we have a, a passive uh, elbow system uh, activated by the gas shock over here. Each gas shock is a 50 pound gas shock. So um, when it deploys, it will straighten the arm out. And um, so we can pull the arm out to take a look. So the gas shock essentially, um, the gas shock will straighten the arm out. And then it, this is the deploy, deployment of the entire arm. The wrist here is powered by the Neo on the um, distal arm. Um, there are two Neos. The, um, the Neo on the right is um, powering the uh, intake rollers. It has a, uh, the sprocket and the chain are actually inside the tube and they are on the live axle over here on the wrist. And um, the Neo on the, on the left over here powers the wrist and um, it spins the wrist around uh, 180 uh, degree angle. Um, the intake part is inspired by the wild stain intake. Um, it has the wheel and belt system. The wheels are responsible for kicking the cone in to the back rollers. Uh, which holds the cone, and the wheels also hold uh, intakes the cube. So the wheels are actually spaced uh, in a way such that it's slightly less than the tip of the cone. So every time the intake goes in contact with the cone, um, one of the wheels will always be in contact with the uh, the cone so that uh, it has a good grip um, to kick the cone in. Can we demonstrate your, your wrist and intake? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we can do. Yeah, we can do the cone first. So this is a tip cone intake. We can pick up cones when it's tipped towards us, and it essentially flips the cone up, and then um, the belt will send the cone all the way back to the back rollers. Now let's head it to to Cafe for your design process with a seven district win streak. Talk to me about your design process with this robot. Yeah, I think so. Our big like motto for our team is like simple but effective or like robust design. So we started off by, like Michael said, taking inspiration from Team 111 with the intake. We also took inspiration from uh, the Holy Cow's 2011 robot in which they had like a passive like wrist similar to us. And they also had like something just stopping it. So when they were in their like preset position before auto, they had it like held up within their frame, frame perimeter and everything like that. So we took heavy inspiration from that. It also was like a lot of math worked out. So before we even started with like our whole inversion process, sorry, our inversion process, we had to figure out like, oh, can we have a low enough center of gravity in which that would work out and not make us tip easily. So on our belly pan, it's like a stainless steel belly pan. So that adds like 20 pounds a robot, a stainless steel front bar. And obviously the placement of the battery helps add to that uh, st st uh, stability. Uh, furthermore, like all our uh, pre-specific poses, originally we had like an intake design that held cone and cubes a little bit differently. But with this process, we have like cone and cubes for L1 and L2 are the exact same position, and only at L3 are they significantly different. So it's really simple. It's also our first time making like a huge arm, so we wanted to eliminate like degrees of freedom, which is why we implemented like the Holy Cow's passive wrist. Now, with talking about the different uh, heights, that is a perfect transition to software. Talk about your presets, Sean, about your presets, your for the different heights and stuff like that. Talk to me about how you have all that incorporated together. Yeah, of course. Uh, this year we've been trying to create ease of driver control so that the driver has to worry about less things. So what we've been doing this year is we have a lot of positions in which like, we click a button and it already goes to that position. So uh, can you go to intake, please? Oh, sorry. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, and now that we know that we have a cone, we can go to any position that we want. So, level two. So this... And then, if you want, level three here, yeah. And so basically, this allows us to make everything easy. So like, you just call out a position and we go to wherever we want. Now, heading it over to, to Philip, talk to me about your auto align. You guys look like you guys have two limelights. Tell me how that auto line works. Hi, yeah, so this year we really wanted to ease up the job for the driver, so we made a very complex auto alignment algorithm. So here you see we have two limelights, which is very goofy, but this also allows us to use our auto alignment algorithm for, from either side of the robot. So as you just saw, our level three in cone placement uses an inversion, which means we score backwards, and these two limelights allow us to use an auto alignment algorithm on, on either side of our robot. So the first stage of our auto alignment algorithm is a snap to grid, which uses our gyro heading that immediately snaps the robot to the grid and uh, allows the driver to uh, stay uh, strafing uh, around the grid so that he can change whichever position he wants to score in. And the second stage is the TX alignment with the data from our limelight, which horizontally centers uh, us onto our closest node that we are at, which makes it very easy for the driver um, to just spit the, spit the game piece and score it onto the node. Another section of our auto align is since we have a very wide intake, game pieces can go into the intake at, uh, in a variety of uh, positions. Right. So, like, cones can be offset to the left or offset to the right. Um, our front limelight here actually has a special pipeline that will read the offset uh, position of the cone. Oh, nice. And by doing that, we're able to add an offset to our auto alignment algorithm, which means even if the cone is offset from the intake, the center of the cone will always be aligned to the pole that we are scoring on. So that's that, a very cool addition. That, that is a robot. really cool feature, and it really helps, especially with the wide intake. Yep. Really nice. Now, let's go to you, Marshall, about your electronics. You have a couple of sensors yeah. that help us with the auto align as well. Yeah, so we, we definitely do. Um, so the biggest two sensors that we have are actually on our intake. Um, so the first sensor is here. It's a beam brake sensor. Um, there's a little bit of reflective tape on the other side. And so if we get a, a cube, it'll trip this first beam brake sensor. Um, with a cone, however, the cone goes all the way through here and will trip this beam brake sensor that's below it. Also, of reflective tape on the other side. And so the robot will always know if that bottom beam brake is tripped, then we have a cone, um, or yes, a cone. And then uh, if it's just the top one, it's a cube. So that also helps with um, making things simpler for the driver so they don't have to be like, oh yes, we have a cone or we have a cube. Um, and I assume also on your, uh, probably in your smart dashboard on your driver session, you let the, the drivers know uh, what um, what game piece they have? Uh, yeah, so actually the, the lights will change oh, nice. color um, between yellow and purple depending on what we have. Um, we also use that to signal to the human right. player what um, what game piece we're looking for. Got to have um, that communication across the field. Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, again, in keeping it simple, we, we had a Hall Effect sensor to um, help home the, the wrist and whole entire arm when it was stowed, but we're like, it's gonna be in the same spot anyway, so yeah. We we use um, like the um, the feedback from the motor mm -hmm. to sort of uh, determine where that is now. So 2023 Mid Atlantic DCMP winners, 5895 Petty Robotics. Really, th thank you for walking around with your robot with us. Excited to see you guys go compete. Currently on a 2-0 win streak, so trying to keep that in, but still really impressive robot. Really simple, and thank you for walking around your robot with us. Good Thank, you. Thank you. So much. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SolidWorks, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SolidWorks.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.